This is iDraw. This is one of the most powerful vector illustration uh, tools available for the iPad right now. And this is going to be the first episode of my beginner's series of, series of tutorials for it. In this episode, we're going to be getting used to uh, using a few of the basic tools and making this lovely little bug-eyed monster here. So let's get drawing. Well, greetings guys and welcome um, to my first tutorial on iDraw, um, which is a vector drawing tool for the iPad and, and various others. Um, once you've bought the program, um, create yourself a new document. And in this very first tutorial, we're just going to get used to using a few of the tools um, while trying to make ourselves a nice little monster. Um, lots of the lots of people's kind of like um, images that they published on the web seem to involve um, some sort of little monster, so I thought we would um, do the same thing. Now, Look, if you look on the left hand side of your screen, you can see the tool that I'm using because it will always go blue. Um, so if you're never not, ever not sure what I'm doing, have a look on that left hand side to see what's active and you can hopefully work it out from there. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rounded rectangle using the tool I've got highlighted there. Now at the bottom of the screen well, there's a little slider in which I can choose how rounded I want the corners to be and if you look at the little preview um, which is on, to the left of it you can then see how rounded those are going to be. So I'm going to, just going to go for a, a, a slight rounding and then I'm going to draw out a little um, square like that. And then on the left hand side right down the bottom you can see the colors. Um, you've got stroke is on the left which is the one I've just clicked just there which basically is the outline if you've ever used any drawing programs before I'm sure you've come across these and then if you click that click off that and then click to the one on the right of that that is the fill and that's that's basically what is it uh, what color is it actually gonna is, is it gonna be in the inside. Um, top left hand side uh, you've got um, the move tool which is like an arrow with a little kind of cross next to it and use that to just drag your um, rounded square to the top um, in the middle and then if you click one to the right of that you've got something that looks just like an arrow by itself now this has got various names depending on the program you're using um, sometimes it's known as like the node editor or the anchor tool or the path editor but basically because this is a vector program rather than an art program, um, this shape is made up of points, and all of these points are editable, draggable, adjustable, deletable, etc., you know, etc. Et now, if I just grab one of those points, I'm going I'm to grab the one top left-hand side on, on the left, and it's just gone dark blue there. I can actually, just using that that tool I've got highlighted, drag that around anywhere I want and that really is the power of the vector tool I don't have to redraw the whole object I don't have to add a bit on and join them together in some way weird way or paint over it I can just completely edit this shape into whatever um, I want it to be um, so uh, when you're making your own little monster here and I do hope you're kind of following along you know feel free to like pause it wherever you want but drag this out into your monster's head and of course it's a monster it doesn't have to be a particularly kind of um, regular shape you can do whatever you want to do now you might notice that that some of these have got a little blue blob on the end of it that adjusts the curve and we'll talk more about that a little bit later in the tutorial but um, try and avoid them for now and just keep your um, shape looking fairly uh, regular. Um, very important button that I probably should have mentioned um, slightly earlier is at the top, very top, at top of the screen you've got two arrows, one pointing left, one pointing right. That's the undo and the redo button um, which are obviously quite important for when we screw up so uh, don't be afraid to use them if you ever do anything you don't like and you want to get rid of it. So there's going to be our, our monster's uh, shape. Now let's, um, while we're um, adjusting the nodes, let's add on his legs. Now if I come down to the bottom and I try and drag out the uh, the bottom side. The problem is if I drag down one side and then drag down the other side, I don't end up with legs. I just end up with a bigger blob. So the way we need to uh, fix that is we need to actually add some more nodes in and I'll show you the effect that's going to have. Now to do that we need to choose the, the tool that looks like a bit of a head of a fountain pen. If you look on the left hand side you can see the one I've picked. Um, this is often known as a, a Bezier tool. Um, I, I might be pronouncing that slightly wrong but it, it appears on, on most vector programs. And if you look down in the bottom middle of your screen you've got three extra buttons that have come up when I pick that. You've got one which is the Bezier tool by itself, one with a plus, one with a minus and we want the one that has a plus. And now if we zoom into the shape just a little bit more <coughs> 
we can add on extra points um, into the middle of this shape. Now, because they're in blue, I'm just going to change the color of our shape to make them stand out a little bit more. So I've gone back to that tool, I've got that plus highlighted, and I'm going to add four points evenly spaced along the middle. And what you can watch as they appear here one, two, three, four. And remember, you've got that undo tool, and if you don't like where you put them, you can just undo again. But I'm going to one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to go back to that node editing tool that we used a minute ago. And now watch. If I now drag out the middle node on the left-hand side, which is surrounded by two other nodes, I can now pull out a nice little pointy leg. And the same on the right-hand side. Because I've got those extra nodes in, the, like that node there that I've got highlighted isn't going to move. No matter, how much, no matter what I do to this, no matter which direction I pull this in, um, the, the body of the monster, if you like, is never going to move out from where it was. So by adding those little no extra nodes there, we're able to keep certain bits of the shape together while other bits of the shape will be editable for us. And keep adjusting until you're happy with how your monster looks. Now, um, some of these tools are fairly self-explanatory. We're going to go to the, uh, the circle tool here, and we're going to add ourselves um, an eyeball or maybe two eyes depending on what you fancy um, and to do that uh, we're going to we're going to do going to going to go for the uh, the main eye itself then we're going to have the 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 iris and we're going to have a bit of a light spot in there as well so let's go in and draw ourselves out a nice little eyeball like so and then we're going to draw another little circle like so and then we're going to zoom all the way in, right the way in. And I'm going to add a little tiny one, which is going to be our little glint of light. And now if you go back to the select tool, top left hand side, you can select all of these independently. Um, and then you can adjust their colors. I mean, you, you can actually adjust the colors um, as you go. Don't feel you have to do it kind of uh, all, all afterwards. But I, I wanted to kind of show you know, the, the kind of work method that I would use here. So I'm going to um, select the pupil and make it black. I'm going to select the little glint of light and make it white and I'm also going to take the stroke off that one to make it just a little bit bigger and then by selecting off you can now see that our eyeball is starting to take shape. Now if at any point you have you want to move that eye you might have a bit of a problem because if you kind of just drag, drag that and move, whoops, if you just drag that and move you'll probably find you only get a bit of it and you could take it all off with with individual pieces, but the easy way to do it is to draw a box around it. Now, you, you notice there it's actually grabbed the monster as well, but if you add an extra finger to the screen, so I've actually got two fingers on the screen at the moment, it will only select the things that are fully um, surrounded by um, the box that you've drawn, which then allows me to move that eye up just a little bit further. Now, let's add on a... A curve for for his um, mouth. I've drew, I've done pick the curve tool on the left hand side, and we're going to drag that across like that. And then we're going to go back to the node editing tool, um, so we can adjust our character's expression. Now, if you click directly onto one of those nodes, we get those little blue. Um, balls that I was talking about before that adjust the curve and if you pull those curves out and around um, you can change the direction just like that you can change the length like that and then you can make basically any facial expression you want if we can pull both of them down and then pull the square up then we can make it um, a smile or we can pull the squares the squares actually move the object itself whereas the blue whereas the the, um, the circles adjust the curve we can make them sad by pulling it out like that and of course we can uh, narrow the expression or widen the expression as we wish or we can even have a bit of a mix have one of them down and one of them up and give him make him make him look a little bit confused entirely up to you um, but do make yourself um, a little monster's expression now approaching the end of this we just need to add a few little touches if you go into this top right hand side you've got a picture of a cog and in there you can actually adjust the background so if you click um, on uh, the background color bit you can choose yourself a nice color that will complement what you've done with your monster already and then if you zoom out by the way zooming is done with a pinch pinch and uh, pinching in and out as as is standard on most kind of ipad programs now let's give our monster something to stand on 
as well. Um, if we just pick the uh, the rectangle tool, the normal rectangle tool this time, and we can draw a really big rectangle right the way off the edge of uh, what appears to be the screen. Um, and you can the shape will appear absolutely fine. It's just that when we export it, we'll only get the things that actually are in in the in the canvas size. And we'll talk about canvas size another time because this is ju this tutorial is just getting us used to kind of pulling objects around. And then when you want to change the colours of that object, then you need to um, make sure it's selected with the move tool and again you can go into the fill now if you ever find that what it's not having kind of any kind of effect what you're kind of clicking on um, it might be because your transparency is a little low um, or which is this bottom one here that I'm currently moving or it might be that you haven't need to pull up the uh, the color tool there um, to give you some access to some of the different colors but either way we're going to go to a a nice brown which means I need to turn the transparency off and we're going to pull that down so it comes just where our monster's feet will finish. Now the last thing I'm going to do to our little monster is I'm going to take advantage of a couple of the extra effects that are in um, iDraw, namely um, the drop shadow. I'm just going to select the, the main body of our monster go up to the I button and you'll see at the top we've got appearance effects and styles now in effects there is one known as drop shadow if you just click on the tick there um, it gives you just that little um, improved outline on the character if you can see that I'll just move him to the side so you can see it um, as I turn it off and on it is it's a subtle effect but it just kind of separates him from the background a little bit more and if you want to increase those effects you can click there and we can we can make it we can pull the shadow out even further um, and even in a couple of directions and we can decide how blurry we want that shadow as well we can make it completely solid or we can give it kind of pull a little bit of a little bit of a blur which kind of makes it, makes it look a little bit more realistic depending on the look you're going for of course and I'm actually going to do exactly the same thing to the to the eye there as well to give that a bit of separation from the um, from the face and there we are here is our completed monster tutorial number one in iDraw. Obviously we've got loads more to learn, we've got loads more tools to play with, I've got loads more that I want to teach you but this is an excellent starting point. If you have found this tutorial useful then please do give the video a like and subscribe to let me know that you want these tutorials, this tutorial series to continue. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Take care, bye bye.